Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary on Martha's Vineyard. Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, there are 70 of us, and we all get to do what we like, and therefore I do elder law. I've been doing these shows for quite a while, uh, and always talking about my friends Frank and Mary, which you may have seen if I do seminars here. And you've always heard me say Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., and their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And the question is, if you're Frank and Mary on Martha's Vineyard, how do you do that? How do you remain safe? Who are the people that you need to know? Who are the, what are the programs that you need to know about? And of course, everybody knows my friend Sandy Cordovi, uh, my co-host on this show. Um, and she is the person who inevitably finds the people that you need to know, except that I have a feeling that her guest you may already know. So Sandy, thank you very much for coming on and being with me and doing the show. And let's, we want to talk about your guest, and we can just kind of talk a little bit about Martha's Vineyard. I agree with you. I don't think most people need an introduction no, to Dr. No, this is embarrassing Jerry. to have the guest be known uh, by more know. people than the co -host. Be this More than us, bad. right? Yeah, yeah he's, he's been around for a while. And, well, maybe not longer than me, but as far as being on the island goes. But Dr. Jerry Yukovich and I started working together back in the 90s. Back before Back time. In the, before, yikes. Yeah, time ago, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, and I remember so clearly you used to sort of make fun of us because I would be coming in to the clinic at the end of the day to work a plastic surgery clinic with Dr. Gary Feudum there. And, and Dr. Jerry would say, here comes the night crew. <laughs> As if I should have a mop and a bucket over my shoulder or something. But anyway, Dr. Jerry Yukovich and I have been working together for a very, very long time, taking care of elders and, and all kinds of other people, of course, on the vineyard. Um, but I just thought it would be wonderful to get your perspective of our Frank and Mary community. And um, Dr. Jerry and I actually go out and do bunches of home visits together for hospice. And um, so he just has a really good, firm grip on what's going on with our Frank and Marys on the vineyard and the elder community. And, be and, and before he starts doing that, though, remember, I'm a, I'm, so I don't know anybody. So yeah. can we just ask, there may be a few people who don't Definitely. know any backstory. So you're from Ohio, you're not from here. How did you, this is, this is, how did you end up here exactly? Um, well, my wife and I were living up in Boston mm -hmm. and uh, I happened to be invited to be a part of the Bloomsday uh, pageant at the Catherine Cornell Theater. And we decided to spend the weekend. We were doing a play up at Boston University and we came down to do the play here. And we looked around and we thought, wow, these houses are nice. And this seems like a great place. Our daughter was one. We thought maybe this would be a good place to live. So we looked at houses the next day. Yeah. And um, before we knew it, we were signing and we became a part of the and neighborhood were, right within the shadow of, of the Catherine Cornell Theater. And, and, and so did you think that was really the beginning of your acting career here? Or did you really figure you were going to be staying as a doctor? And, right? Well, at the time, I had a job in Boston. So yeah. for the first three years, I was traveling back and forth. Yeah. And uh, yeah. then uh, after three years, started working uh, a year for Dr. Michael Jacobs in what is now Vineyard Medical Care. Mm -hmm. And then I worked in the uh, hospital at the emergency department for about eight years. Mm -hmm. And then for the past uh, 12 years, worked again at Vineyard Medical Care. And I just retired from there um, a couple months ago. And uh, now uh, for the past eight or nine years, I think I've been the medical director of Hope Hospice on the island, uh, a job which Sandy helped to recruit me for. And it's been a very good, very rewarding experience. Uh, and I've enjoyed um, the teamwork that we've had. Uh, and of course, when it comes to hospice, there's nothing phony about it. You have to be telling the truth. If life's mysteries are suddenly being revealed, you're there to see them. Uh, for the good, for the bad, yeah. and the love always rises uh, to uh, the occasion um, during my experiences with Hope Hospice. Um, any hospice experience is, is important that way, I think. So it's, it's worked out nice as a career, and um, I'll plan to do this with the uh, Hope Hospice for a few more years and, um, and proceed. I have other activities that I do. I'm writing a yeah. novel. I've, I do acting and uh, pursue some musical things. And my daughter's living in New York now. She's out of the house. And my wife is busy doing other stuff, too. So yeah. um, it's wor worked out quite harmoniously. That's great. I That's might great. point out, um, 
under the general terms of what your program is about, um, it seems that the Martha's Vineyard is a wonderful place to come and retire. We were lucky because when we moved in, our daughter was one, but just up the hill was the Tisbury School. So we would play in the Tisbury um, in the playground there? Playground. The school, yeah. And then when it came time, she was enrolled. And then just up the street from there is a senior center. And then across the street from there is a the cemetery. The cemetery. That's right. So we had a it small licked. little village we there. You never have to leave, off. right? <laughs> what, one size right. Uh, fit all. Uh, <laughs> so uh, we, our future was paved right up William right. Street, and, which was recently repaved, I might yeah, add, yeah. <laughs> magnificently. <laughs> so uh, off we went and uh, never looked back. Um, we uh, get off island less frequently than I anticipated, but there's so many adventures here, and I'm very active with the Martha's Vineyard Playhouse and uh, have been on the board there for a long time. Currently, I'm the treasurer. And so, and so I it get- handy, It's handy that you can walk to it from William Street. Yeah, so that's, a, that's two blocks from my that's house. Handy, yeah. So you uh, find yourself getting enlisted for like janitorial services and stuff <laughs> as a result? Rarely. Say? Rarely, yeah, Rarely. that's good, that's good. So, so that was my interruption to your broader question was, so based on that experience, you could just kind of talk about, from your perspective, you're dealing, you've been dealing with seniors for years, right? You're dealing with them now. You're dealing with a very important part of their lives. I, I always tell folks what I like about dealing with seniors is they all know they're going to die. You know, their kids don't get it, right? They're all like, oh, ma, you're never going to die. No, no, I'm going to die. And so their goal is not to not die but rather to live as well as they can. Mm -hmm. and, and so can you just kind of talk about, you know, your experience in dealing with seniors, how that may have changed over the last number of years, and, and kind of where, what's, what's here now that's good, what could be here that, you know, that you've seen maybe in other places, where you think it should go? Well, let me, um, for full yeah, disclosure, that's in 30 seconds I'm, in 70, it, in I'm 72, <laughs> so I am a member of the senior yeah, yeah. Uh, age uh, cohort. And you, all we along- were just, We were just talking that you graduated four years ahead of me at our, we went to college, we went to the same college. That's it's, right. It's a small world. It's yes, just, and we, um, you know, I've been able, my wife's the same age, we've been able to take notes on what goes on yeah. on the island. And it's amazing to me how the vineyard becomes more and more uh, rich as you, the longer you live here, you see the elaborate uh, tapestry, which at first seems difficult to interpret, and then suddenly you see the gold threads, you see the silver threads, you see the purple threads, you see all the threads coming together, and they're remarkable people. I think uh, so many people come here um, with the anticipation that it is lively intellectually, culturally, and spiritually. What they might not know is that there's uh, an awful lot of loving care that's given as a sense of community. Uh, it feels almost like a little bit of a time warp, uh, which we noticed when we first drove down Barnes Road. I thought, boy, this could be happen. This road could happen in the 30s. It's very similar. Yeah. Of course, we happen yeah. to live in the historic district, but it's the way people uh, care for each other that's important. Mm -hmm. I think um, the Vineyard Village at home, for example, is very, very helpful. And uh, I'm a strong believer in that program where um, people who have some time on their hands and can act as, as a uh, charioteer for some of the older folks, uh, drive them around to doctors, to shopping, to various uh, experiences, that's wonderful. The, the senior center, uh, very senior centers, West Tisbury, Edgartown, uh, in Vineyard Haven, there's always stuff for people who are becoming less, how shall we say, um, acute mentally, mm -hmm. uh, also to participate. Um, so it's, it's really kind of an ideal place, and there's always exciting stuff. In the summertime, you have amazing uh, experiences. They have big, you know, major world talent coming here to perform. You have um, theaters, you have dance experiences. So you, you, your mind does not go to sleep here on the island. It's not a place where uh, some people like to fish, some people like to boat, uh, but even if you don't get into the water or on the water, there's tons of stuff to do here. It's a very um, active senior community. So, um, and I might say from my perspective as a doctor, having seen people uh, advance in age, those who do protect themselves by being physically and mentally active, 
those who don't, it's very clear that the people do better into age who early on get into the habit of regular physical exercise, keeping avid in their various uh, interests. So um, all those are available here. It's really a, mar a remarkable place to age. I suppose that's an interesting point, that to the extent that you have those interests, if you're retiring to some place that's just this kind of isolated little senior community away from everything that doesn't have those things, it's easy for those things to atrophy because the options aren't there, right? Whereas here, you've got all that stuff. You're constantly stimulated. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, there's just opportunity abounding everywhere. And I think part of the medical condition called involutional mel melancholia, where people get a little bit depressed. Can you do that again? Involutional melancholia? Involutional melancholia, <laughs> which is the depression that comes when That's you're poetic. not going to live quite so long. Yeah. Um, and certainly not as long as when you were 20 years younger. Right. So some elders are disposed to a sense of futility in their lives. That, I think, here on the island is much less uh, likely because there are people saying, what are you doing? Come on, let's go. I, I didn't even mention all the churches that are very active uh, uh, to support people on the island. So um, there's a lot going on. The libraries have, um, I think what's really cool is some of the places that you wouldn't even think of have specific programs for seniors like the libraries and the yep. YMCA. Yep. You know, the YMCA has the silver sneakers program going on and we've got the matter of balance program going on in two or three different places on the island and I think it's really um, wonderful that there are so many of the spots that you might find kids or or 20 somethings or 30 somethings working out but you also have programs right there in that same place designed specifically for seniors to integrate seniors into the overall community um, and I, I just think that that's a wonderful part I had one elder woman say to me one time I don't know if I can get this right, but she said, the vineyard is a wonderful place to grow up while you're growing old. <laughs> That's great. Nicely <laughs> said. That's great. I just, I just, and she was 93. <laughs> and don't forget the film center, which has top class right. uh, films year round. Absolutely. And I salute uh, all those activities as well. There's as well as the playhouse that has great actors. Exactly. I've heard that legendary actors that come here to right? I grew up with them in my backyard <laughs> listening to them perform all the time. It was really That's right. fun. That's right. Like a constant rehearsal. Your really house fun. is just a constant rehearsal. One of the things that um, one of the things that I struggle with a little bit as a geriatric care manager and, and you you've sort of been in the trenches with me uh, on this one for a while is we definitely have an issue of some of our elders that can't get out and get to medical care. Mm -hmm. um, and and one of the things that the vineyard is really great with and um, they probably won't appreciate me sort of announcing this on air, but um, the docs here on the vineyard I find, and you certainly set the pace for this, but the docs here on the vineyard I find are willing to do some home visits when they need to. Um, and that's they do been, home visits? Yeah, they do. Boy, you this, know, is, the old this is going back in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, it isn't unusual for me to have, um, have some of the doctors you know, if I call them and say, hey, can you go and visit so-and-so at home? Gone. I can't get them out. Will yeah. you come with me? And they do. And, and I think that's another very special part of our community. Mm -hmm. um, it isn't meeting the full need, but it certainly is helping. Now, now it, is it your sense, obviously, that, that one of the pieces of what's going on here is that that senior population continues to expand as a percentage, yes. even as a percentage of the population. Mm -hmm. Is it your, your sense that the, the medical service community that the doctors and nurses that are that need to be taken care of those folks have also been kind of expanding to the extent that that's needed here is i'm just I'm just curious about that because obviously one of the issues is if you're not here you're not here it's a long ways it's a tough drive to get to the it's next i island. think it's a challenge to get yeah. doctors to live on the island the, the cost of living is high you also have to have if you're a doctor and you have a partner if you have a spouse the spouse doesn't like it so much. Oh, that's a problem. Island that's life problem. is different. So there has been some turnaround of doctors who come and they, you know, they like it for a while and off they go. Uh, it's a relatively removed area. I know the hospital's done everything they can to try to attract people to come in, right. subspecialists. Uh, but there are some subspecialists that we don't have. And that's too bad. Um, I should. I feel a little hypocritical having retired and saying there are not enough doctors on the island. That's right. But 
you know, I'm a senior now. Yeah, I have exactly certain right. uh, exactly right. privilege from that point yeah. of view. And I hadn't thought of it from that perspective, that, to, that, to, that part of it just is a recruitment issue, right? Yes. That, you, that you may very well have enough people to support a subspecialty here, but it's a matter of people who really want this lifestyle. I mean, I was amazed to talk to a friend of mine who came here on vacation like for a few summers ago and said, God, there was nothing to do. It was so, it's like, whoa. But so for it, unless you have a certain, from a certain frame of mind and for certain things to, that you want to be doing, you don't do them here, right? So, so it, it, there are folks that just wouldn't necessarily want to live here, right? So yeah. trying to recruit that. It can be, be nice. It is an island. Right. There's no bridge to this island. Right. And um, nor will there be one. <laughs> and so, so, but uh, it's it, it, nonetheless, uh, we are we, we're all aware of that. I often liken it to a, a board game where you can only roll a six or a five or whatever, and you go so many uh, spaces down right. the board, and then you come back. It's it's um, it's wonderful that way. The two things you sacrifice: one is anonymity, and the other is spontaneity. You can't go off and just jump into the car and run off to a show and or right. an art, art exhibit at the, in Boston. Uh, and people tend to know each other yes. for the good and the bad. And there are good and bad parts about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I remember but, talking to a person saying that the trouble is that everything that she that happens to her family shows up at the line in the Chilmark uh, post office. You, know, <laughs> you hear people kind of chatting and, you know, next yep. thing, you know so word that, spreads fast and word spreads fast. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So from, from your perspective, how do you see it changing? You know, how has it changed over the last 10 years? How has it changed? How do you see it changing? And if there were things that if are there things that are missing that you think could could happen over the next several years? Because one of the purposes of this show is to have people thinking about how can Frank and Mary's community be better? What is there now? What is good? What's bad? But how, how can it be better? I think um, the hospital is doing everything they can, to my knowledge, to try to improve this doctor population mm -hmm. ratio, which right now is in, inadequate. Um, and that's from a medical point of view, that's number one, is just we need, we need the people power to look after the people. Yeah. Um, the fact that there are more people coming down here, to some extent is good um, that we're, go we're going to have people who are w willing to engage themselves in these various other activities. And the people who retire here are usually of some degree of achievement in life. Yeah. Um, I think there's a there, there's clearly a difficulty in terms of uh, the classes on the island. You have, um, you have people who are working uh, in the yeomanry, kind of keeping things going for the rest of, and then you have people who are used to, uh, in the summer, pe people at least feeling rather privileged about what should be done. Right. Um, the economy is layered, um, and there are, sometimes that's troublesome. Uh, I do think, however, that uh, looking forward, we're going to have plenty of services for people. I mean, the hospital's trying to take care of this do doctor shortage, and the other services are all in place. The very active uh, uh, senior um, services department. So, yes, I'm, I don't have a vision. I think there are going to be more in numbers uh, as the boomer generation uh, gets older. Uh, they're going to be they're going to be wanting for an interesting place to live. Here it is. And I know Sandy's well. Sandy faces it all the time in her business. Mm -hmm. This 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 issue of trying to find. The, the, nurse, the nursing staff, the care staff, the other players in addition to the doctors to kind of supplement the stuff that you're doing. We see uh, some situations where you have seniors who have retired here for a certain number of years. Their children may be getting advanced in years two and they live in California or in Florida and they don't understand exactly what's going on with their parents. Uh, as their parents p possibly or potentially could become less mentally agile, less, and less independent. It's difficult for the kids to say, well, maybe I should take another look in. And what, how can we be good children without trying to interfere in our parents' lives? And that's a dynamic that I've seen certainly in my hope hospice work a lot. 
where people don't understand exactly what's going on with their parents. They, they at the risk of um, interrupting their lives, have to come out and take a look. And figure it out. And, and sometimes out. they have to say, we got to find a different place for you, mom or dad or whatever. And that's not fun. If you, if you really want to stay in your house and you typically... That's your field, you know. Yes, yeah, and the, and, the, and the more vulnerable you, the more frail you are, the more you want to be in that house. Because I always tell clients, you know, th no matter how bad your memory, you're always going to remember where the bathroom is in your house, yeah. right? And you're going to know where the salt and pepper shaker is, you know, and you're going to... So to leave that house, it's a really... So, yeah. I, and I know that Sandy's going to have another, another person also to be talking about hospice sometime in the future. Yeah, in the future, yes. But can we yes. talk a little, can you tell us a little bit about that too? Because I'm, I'm interested because I deal with a lot of folks, but maybe it's not true here, but typically when you say hospice, mm. they're thinking dead. <clears throat> they're thinking, oh, Days. about to be dead. Days, Right, yeah. so I'm going to call hospice. And nurses, they, and, and hearses. And, <laughs> nurses and hearses. Nurses and hearses. Oh, that's good. <laughs> That's very good. Uh, this is a guy who's been in the medical profession for a long time, right? Where is that medical We don't want to use too many of those. We don't want to keep them here too long, right? So can you just kind of talk about well, that? Our, you know? I, I think I'm happy to talk about that because um, the, the two hospices on the island is Hospice of Martha's Vineyard and Hope Hospice. We're the Medicaid approved. We're the ones who can, um, who must uh, satisfy the various governmental uh, strict requirements on how long a person's going to live. Um, as one of my jobs as medical director is to see our patients. Theoretically, if, if you have a life expectancy of six months or less, then you're eligible for hospice. That's not always true. We have patients who've been on for as long as two or three years, but they seem to be, oddly enough, a lot of hospice patients live longer than their other sort of placebo patients yeah. because because they're on hospice. They're on hospice. They don't <laughs> right. have to worry about other stuff. They don't have to get blood tests. They don't have to get a lot of stuff that is considered heroic medicine. And they can concentrate on loving the people who love them, and which I think is what one of the big realizations. Hospice of Martha's Vineyard um, does a superb job. They have a little more flexibility in who they can accept. I, when I was working at Vineyard Medical Care, I had plenty of patients who were seen by Hospice of Martha's mm -hmm. Vineyard who probably wouldn't come up to the expectations or strict definition of a hospice patient from the point of view of uh, Hope Hospice. Because you may not be able to certify that they meet those, we, those criteria exactly. in terms of life, ex of life expectancy. And exactly. So. And so, so, so I'm curious, so Sandy, because you're talking to folks all the time, right? This is what's, this is who you talk to, mm -hmm. right? So, is it is it? Do you find that it's hard bringing up a conver or or getting to a conversation with the with the parents or and or with the kids that says, well, you know, maybe it's you. you there are a lot of great hospice services. Do you find them gasping like, I'm not dead. <laughs> the H word. I'm not dead. Yeah. The H word. You know, I I am as passionate about hospice as Dr. Jerry is, and I think that. Um, I try to explain to people as much as I could keep them listening to me because once you bring up that word, you know, so I kind of back my way into it the best I can. But um, I remind them about Art Buckwald, who was on hospice for eight years. Um, it was either eight or 13, but he, he was on hospice he, for a whole he, long did time. He, did he die here? I don't think, did he die on the vineyard? See, I don't see, think so. I don't know. He's buried here. Because um, I was going to say, I thought I, I thought I saw his tombstones. That's what I was, no, that, yeah, that little, yeah. the little yeah. one going out to West Chop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. could be. Um, yeah, it's like the artist's, the artist's graveyard there. It's, it's an it amazing is a pretty place. cool little yeah. graveyard. Yeah. Um, I try to explain to people that hospice is, um, a lot of people do sort of relate it to those last weeks of life. And that actually the best benefit of hospice, either Matzah's Junior Hospice or Hope Hospice, is to get on as early as possible because hospice nurses and doctors are used to treating symptoms for which they know they cannot cure. However, can we treat the symptoms and, and get that shortness of breath under control so you can go back out and play a few more rounds of golf? 
um, or right. go up to Menemshire and sit and, and have, you know, some fried clams and watch the sunset and be comfortable in the car. And so our focus of hospice is to, is to make you feel as good as you can for as long as you can. And make those um, days be really get good. Those, yeah, get in all those things that are on right. that list. And, and yes, it's and funny, for the Medicare certified hospice, yeah. we have to determine that if your disease were to continue on the expected course that you could pass away in six yeah. months. But nobody gets punished if they don't. Right. So, I mean, you might actually graduate from hospice, but that's not a punishment. And so, a, um, I'm gonna, I, I I'm feel gonna do, the same I'm gonna way. do a, a little story from the, from the Go for it. So my old partner, my wonderful partner, who was oh, yes. 10 yes. years older than me, yes. when I got, out of, when I got out, of, out of law school, he hired me, and I always looked at him and said, oh, so that's me in 10 years. So, if, so he died of cancer about three years ago. So me in 10 years is dead for three years, which makes you very aware of pain. But, but he, so he, before he died, he, got, he, got, he had cancer. He got diagnosed, living a great life and blah, blah, blah. And he goes into the hospital, the, talks to the doctor. He's had a stomach ache. Oh, you ought to get checked. They bring him to the hospital. They open him up for a seven hour operation. They close him up after two. Doctor says, nah, the good news is it's slow growing. The cancer is slow growing, and therefore you probably got a life expectancy of another like six months. The bad news is it's slow growing, so nobody picked this up, and there's no way we're going to stop this, right? Hmm. And my partner's reaction was he went home, talked to his wife, said, no tears, no tears. They put a sign on the bed, you know, and he said, I want to live every day of my life. I'm blessed because everybody has a, has a clock, is on a clock, but I know about when it's going to end. And he said, going to what you were just saying, he said, I want, I'm gonna have chemo, but only chemo that doesn't make me nauseous, right? I wanna have it slow down, slow it down. He ended up living for 18 months, right? But he lived to the end. He was out fishing the week before, the week before he died because, because they were able to give him the care. That's the point. That's right. It wasn't right. care to cure, it was care to give him that every day because it isn't about dying, it's That's about right. living. That's it's right. about living. So the, when, and we describe it that way. And, and it's, Frank it's, and Mary aren't afraid to talk about dying. No. Their children are. And I think they one of it. the- They hate that conversation. They do, but- Oh, Dad, you're gonna live forever. You look great. Oh, part come on. Of, part of one of you the know? things that we have to do is to help, help my generation, our generation, you know, understand that it's an okay topic. It's an okay thing to discuss with your elders. Uh, Dr. Jerry yeah. has a patient over at the Henry de Burra house where I'm the nurse there yeah. um, that's turned 103 a couple weeks ago. Um, a dynamic person and, and doing great, you know, and but does sort of, I hear that resident a lot talking on the phone to people explaining how they want the end to look, do they want to be cremated versus, right. they're not afraid to talk about this. No. Um, and, no. um, and even if there's not a hospice diagnosis, elder parents want to talk about it. They want to talk about what's going on. And, you know? and that's actually, I think, I think for, comfort. for next year, that's, like, that's some of the stuff we should be talking more and more about. You know, this, that beyond the healthcare proxy, we all get it, you have to have a proxy. But ha how many people have actually had that conversation with their kids saying, yes. Over this long period of time, if I really can't kind of make, what do I really want? What do I, to make every day good? Yes. To make every day good. Yes. I'm sorry, we were drifting. That was <laughs> that. No, but your, but your that that's that summary of kind of what the essence of hospice is was really, just really wonderful. I think for people to be able to appreciate that, the fact that you're still doing that, and not to be afraid of it. And of course, you're an ideal person to do it because he's one of those old guys like us. Well, uh, not like you. He's yeah, one of those yeah. old guys like me. <laughs> yeah. Thank right? you for taking me out of that. Yeah. So, Doctor, thank you so much. This was just, it was really wonderful. Thank you, Sandy. She, she, Sandy always thank does you. this. This is terrific. And, and good luck in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in, your, in your, now in your acting career down the street from you and all of you, the things you're gonna be doing. I, I'd like to just say one thing. You this, is gonna be, this is gonna be an ad for one of his, Art one of his Buck, plays. Too. Art Buckwald um, was, when he was uh, in his, one, of his, one of his final months of yeah. life, uh, he had written a play back around uh, 72 or whenever the uh, Kent, uh, Kent State Kent shootings State. Yeah, happened. Yeah. It was a play called Sheep on the Runway. It was a, it was a sort of a, a um, satire on the Vietnam War. And it opened on Broadway and closed in two weeks because nobody wanted to laugh about the Vietnam War, especially right. after the Kent right. State shootings. Um, we found a copy of this and we did a reading uh, at the Playhouse 
Art was in the front row in his wheelchair. I think he was m minus one leg. Yeah. And um, w at the end of the play, which was hilarious, um, the whole audience go to, uh, got up and, and applauded Art Buckwald. Here's a play that was buried 40 years before. And here was a guy who, talk about bucket list, saw it produced again. Oh. And got to hear that. Got, and got to actually, I love that's that great. Story. It was just magnificent. That's, that's great. That is magnificent. That's it's something great. that happens on the island. Too. And it's something that happens on the island, yeah. which is one of the reasons why we do it. And what we do, yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So thank you so much. Glad that you're staying on the island. I'm sure that we'll, we'll, we'll see each other again. Good. Thank you. Thanks again. Thanks this so is much. always a pleasure. It's the end of the year, so happy holidays to everyone. We'll see you in 2019, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary on Martha's Vineyard. Thank you. Thank you.